Wait, so, so you're telling me that's not a tree? And that's not a Pikachu over there? And also, this is not a Pokeball in my hand right here? Apparently, they're just all figments of my imagination. Apparently, they're a Pokemon under, under some disguise or something. What are you gonna say next, that you're a Ditto? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Wait a minute. Oh my god! It's hideous! Oh! What is going on guys? This is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon video. And in this video, we're gonna go over 10 Pokemon that you've never seen before, like, like literally. But before we start, I just wanna let you guys know this video is sponsored by, well, you've seen this a lot. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, furry, don't judge me. Yo, Raid Shadow Legends is one of the best fantasy themed turn-based role-playing games on the market. And now you can get on, on the computer as well, instead of just your cell phone. See, I'm cooler than you, Ferret. That's right, Ferret, Raid Shadow Legends. And since it's like a listicle video we're doing, I'm gonna go over my top five favorite champions from this game. So here we go. For number five, we have Cecilia Flame Tongue from Demon Spawn. And I just like the way she looks for no reason. Number four, we have Elinaro from the High Elves. And I, I love High Elves in fantasy, so I gotta choose one of them. Number three, we have Astralon from the Sacred Order, and I, I love that he's dual wielding. He's ready to go fight some angels. Number two, we have Cillian the Lucky from Banner Lords, and I love that he's a knight with a luck factor to him. And for number one, we have Jintoro from the Shadowkin, and guys, he's, he's a samurai. I love samurais, and he's got a nice hairdo. And along with the champions, my new favorite thing in Raid are the clans. You can actually form a clan and complete quests with your teammates and get access to a shop with new powerful items. Yeah, that's right. They added a brand new clan shop that gives you access to incredible powerful weapons and such where you can just go boss with them and fight as an incredibly powerful team. And also, this month, Raid added new champions to collect from fragments in the Doom Tower. And yo, if, if the champion's from a Doom Tower, they must be pretty hardcore. So yeah, if you like what you see and you want to get a head start and raid, check out the link down below in the description or scan this QR code you see right here. And if you're a new player and you log in right now, you'll get the new epic hero Konaru, which is a great character for the Doom Tower. And also get a bunch of other stuff like all this, all this stuff right here. So be sure to go to your inbox and claim all these awesome rewards because you only have 30 days to get them. So yeah, download raid and I'll see y'all in the game. And with that said, let's get started with the video. All right, so starting off this video, let's start with Cloyster to really set the tone of what this video is all about. Because in Pokemon Stadium, it states that no one has ever seen what is inside its shell. So that means that Cloyster's true identity has never been seen before. And in Pokemon Gold, it states that it's impossible to open once the shell is shut. So humans couldn't cram it open to see what it looks like. And no, it'd be really hard to destroy it as well because in Pokemon Yellow, it states that its shell is harder than diamonds. And as we all know, Diamond is one of the hardest rocks to ever be in, on Earth. So finding a material that's higher on the Mohs scale than Diamond would be a challenge. So really, closest true identity will forever be unknown. Unless we, you know, imagine what it might look like. And so that's where this video comes in. I commissioned a Fakemon artist for every single one of the Pokemon on this video to imagine what these Pokemon would look like behind their disguise. And so for Cloyster, this is what we think it might look like. As you can see, it has a very long body and this is kind of reminiscent to Shelder's tongue because when you look at Shelder, it just has a tongue sticking out of it. But what if Cloyster becomes the tongue when it evolves? And from the artist's notes, Fatmon believes that Cloyster might be a gooey duck, which is a very large clam that has a long body sticking out of its, of its shell. And apparently gooey duck is pretty delicious. So there's probably a lot of Pokemon out there that want to eat Cloyster, which might explain why Cloyster evolved to have such a strong shell so other Pokemon can't eat it. But yeah, this is just a concept and I encourage all of y'all to draw y'all's own versions of these Pokemon on this list, like in the Discord server, in the fan art section, or just tweet me on Twitter. But yeah, what lies within Cloyster's shell is a Pokemon we've never seen before. And that is why it is on this list. 
Next, we have Genesect, and we've never actually seen what Genesect looks like without his armor. Because if you didn't know, in Pokemon Black and White, Team Plasma revived this ancient Pokemon and added the powerful cannon and armor to it. Yeah, this Pokemon wasn't always a steel type, it was just a pure bug type during its ancient time. And speaking of ancient times, this Pokemon is like 300 million years old and was said to be the apex predator of its era. And being an apex predator is no joke. I mean, th that means you're on top of the food chain. Everything below you is eaten by something else. Like, why do you think in Lion King, Mufasa tells Simba that everything the light touches is their kingdom? Well, it's because they're the apex predator, that nothing can stop them. So 300 million years ago, when there were Pokemon like Kabutops, Aerodactyl, and Amastar, Genesect was the strongest of them all. And with the art I got commissioned, this is what we think it might have looked like. And man, when Dirk and Winnie sent me this, the first thing that came to my mind was that it looks like the Terminator, which honestly makes this perfect because I can definitely imagine the ancient form of Genesect being a, an assassin of some sort. And according to the origin of Genesect, it's probably based on a giant insect from the Paleozoic era. So this design of Genesect 300 million years ago was, was probably gigantic and it just looked like a Terminator destroying th these little tiny bugs around it. So yeah, you probably wouldn't want to mess with Genesect back in the ancient times. Oh, and before I end this one off, I, I have to bring up the theory that Kabutops might be the ancient form of Genesect, which is a really fun theory because both their Pokedex entries state that they're from 300 million years ago. So I don't know, it either could be Kabutops or a Pokemon we've never seen before. So, so let me know in the comments, which do you think is the true Genesect? Now for this Pokemon, we're gonna get smaller, like microscopic small. And this one is not even an official Pokemon yet, but maybe in the future we'll, we'll see it in the Pokedex. But a Pokemon we've never seen before is Pokerus. Yes, Pokerus is actually a microscopic life form that attaches itself to Pokemon, kind of like a parasite. But the upside with Pokerus is that it doesn't drain the life form of its host, it, it actually has a mutualistic relationship with its host, and actually makes the host even stronger. It's like a kind of steroid that's a life form. And if you have no idea what Pokerus is, well, in the video games, you actually have a 1 in 20,000 chance of catching Pokerus when, when you're catching a Pokemon or, or battling someone. And when you heal your Pokemon, Nurstroy will go, oh, you've caught Pokerus. And Pokerus helps the Pokemon gain EVs even faster. So if you're trying to EV train your Pokemon, you want to have Pokerus. And just like other microscopic life forms, Pokerus multiplies and attaches itself to more Pokemon that's in your party. So this is an effect that you want to have and want to spread to your other Pokemon. And so, to the concept, this is what we think Pokerus would, would look like. And man, Dark and Winnie did a great job with this illustration because he used the face of the Pokerus that you see in the video games. And with his body shape, we based it on a micro animal, which, which is a microorganism that can only be seen through a microscope that has a multicellular structure, which basically means it's an organism with more than one cell. And we thought it'd be pink because the Pokerus symbol is pink, so it just fits incredibly well. So yeah, yeah, this is what Pokerus could look like, and maybe one day, if we ever play a Pokemon game that's in the, like the microscopic level of things, kind of like an Ant-Man version of a Pokemon, maybe we'll encounter Pokerus. That'd be awesome. So yeah, for the fact that this microorganism is canon to Pokemon, and we've never seen what it looks like, that is why I placed it on this list. Now, another Pokemon we've never seen before is the Dragon type of Eevee. And this one is kind of a theory because in Pokemon Origins and Brock's Gym, you can clearly see a cat statue that has dragon wings. And a lot of fans have theorized, including myself, that this might be a hint to the next Eevee evolution, which would be a dragon type Eevee. Because what Pokemon out there resembles a cat that has dragon wings? Well, Eevee with a dragon type evolution would, would be the closest bet. And it would make sense because the dragon typing pairs ju just nicely with the fairy typing, just like Dark and Psy with Espeon and Umbreon. And since Sylveon was released by itself, it's gonna need a parry just like his other Eevee Evolution counterparts. So I don't know, maybe the next Eevee Evolution we see will be a Dragon type, and that'd be honestly insanely hype. And as for the design of the Dragon type Eevee Evolution, this is what we think it might look like. Basically just exactly like the statue, it's just an Eevee with dragon wings. 
But to make this more fun, let's talk about how an Eevee would evolve into a Dragon Eevee evolution, because the Dragon typing is a pretty legendary typing for a Pokemon. So here's my idea. You give a Dragon skill to the Eevee, and then also have a Dragon type Pokemon in your party. And basically, in order to evolve your Eevee, you have to lead with your Dragon type Pokemon, and then swap to Eevee, and then level it up in the same battle. Kind of like as if the Dragon type Pokemon taught the Eevee what it takes to be a Dragon. And as for its ability, it can have the multi-scale ability, which reduces damage when its HP is full. And there are only two Pokemon right now that have that ability, which is Dragonite and Lugia, so a Dragon-type Eve evolution would be perfect for that ability. And as for the battling for this Pokemon, it could be like an offensive tank of some sort. I don't know, y'all can theorize in the comments down below, y'all are probably better at this than me. But yeah, this cat-like Dragon-type Pokemon is a Pokemon we've never seen before. But mark my words, someday we'll have a Dragon Dragon type Eve evolution. Now, we all know that Arceus is the god of all Pokemon, and surely the form that we see is, is his absolute form. But no, I believe Arceus is holding back, and we've never seen what his absolute form looks like, the greater form of Arceus. Because hear me out, in this Pokedex entry, it states that it created the universe with his 1000 arms, and somehow it's related to the unknown, because in the Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver event, the unknown just kinda appear when Arceus is showing the player how it created the universe. So I asked Adam to create an Arceus that has all of the typings and have hands that it created the universe with. And this is what he came up with, and it, it looks amazing. As you can see, Arceus has every single typing imbued into his body with like a halo type of crown thing coming from his chest. And around it, you have these unknown that are shaped as hands, and, and I believe Arceus commanded a, a billion of these, trillions. And just like how Probopass has many noses that it commands to do things for it, I, I believe Arceus commanded his unknown hand to do his bidding. And like, come on, th there's no way that Eternamax Eternatus is the strongest Pokemon to ever be, because Arceus is, is the god. It, it should be omnipotent. So yeah, hopefully we learn more about Arceus in the Legend of Arceus game. I, I, I'm going to be surprised if we don't get at least something new about it. But yeah, I believe there is a form of Arceus that we've never seen before, and that is why it is on this list. Next up, we have the original dragon, and I've, I've covered this one quite a bit on the channel, but, but hey, it, it's a cool concept and I want a lot of people to know about it, okay? So if you didn't know, Reshiram, Zekrom, and Kyurem used to be one dragon, and this original dragon is a Pokemon we've never seen before. And according to legend, this original dragon was owned by two twin brothers who were the heroes of the Unova region, and actually created the Unova region with the original dragon because it was so powerful and mighty. And what caused this mighty dragon to split apart was due to an argument the twin brothers had about things they wanted to pursue. The older twin wanted to pursue the truth in life, and the younger twin wanted to pursue the ideals of life. And due to this conflict of interest, it caused the original dragon to split apart because they started fighting and arguing and, and even battling. And when this epic split happened, it created Reshram and Zekrom, and the crumbs and leftovers from the original dragon created Kira. So if you ever wondered why Kira was able to fuse with Reshram and Zekrom, well, it's because it used to be part of the dragon itself. And so yeah, that is the story of the original dragon. And as for the art I got made for this video, this is what we think it might have looked like. And man, if this one Pokemon created three legendary Pokemon from just the pieces of it, then what does that make that Pokemon? Is there like a stage beyond legendary where it's called like ultra legendary or something? Like I can't even fathom the power of this ultra legendary Pokemon. It, it must have been so strong and these twin brothers must have been one of the strongest trainers to ever live. So yeah, this is one Pokemon that I would love to see be created, and maybe down the road in the future, if there's ever a Pokemon Black and White remake, we, we might see it come to be. But yeah, as for now, it's just a Pokemon we've never seen before, and we'll probably never see ever. Next, we have the Galarian Fossils, and if you ever wondered why the Galarian Fossil Pokemon look very strange, well, it's because they're based on the paleontologist discoveries from the Bone Wars era. And the Bone Wars was known as the Great Dinosaur Rush, where basically a bunch of paleontologists wanted to find fossils and make new discoveries. And just to have the upper hand and outdo the other paleontologists, they would purposely mishmash bones to produce quote unquote new discoveries of dinosaurs. And that's what we see in Pokemon Sword and Shield. These new new discoveries are actually just mismatched dinosaurs combined together that were revived. 
And guess who revived them? They were revived by a paleontologist known as Carolus. Ergo Carolus. She's careless. And so these ancient Pokemon that are mismatched have never been seen in their original bodies. And, and well, that's where this video comes in. We're gonna show you what these Pokemon might have looked like. And the artist Fatmon went above and beyond. He not only made the original bodies, but he also made baby versions of these prehistoric Pokemon. And let's just start with my favorite one, Zolt. Zolt looks amazing. He's, he's like a very speedy, high energetic dinosaur that looks like a Velociraptor. It looks like a very friendly Pokemon that you just play with and, and have fun. And his pre-evolution looks even cuter. It's like the cutest thing I've seen. It, 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 I love this. And then we have Stego Drake, which is my second favorite one. And I just love the coloring of this Pokemon. The green and red just goes great together. And I love how powerful and beastly this Pokemon looks. And I think it might be based on a Stegosaurus, which is one of my favorite dinosaurs from that prehistoric time. And then here's the pre-evolution, this little smaller Stegosaurus, which is still looks like a beast as, as a baby. And just at this stage, it looks like a very solid Pokemon. It probably has a great spread in all of his stats, if it were to be a real one. And then we have Dunkvish, which looks like a very intimidating water-type Pokemon that you wouldn't want to come across in the sea. And of course, he got some humongous jaws, because Dracovish is all about the strong jaw ability with his fishish rind. And then here's just Pre-Evolution, which, which just looks like the cutest little fish I've ever seen in my life. It goes from extremely cute to extremely extremely intimidating. And then finally, we have Artazar, which is probably based on the Plesiosaurus dinosaur. And I love this design. I'm all about water type Pokemon. And this just looks like a Lapras, but like kind of cooler, like a Lapras with some swag. And then lastly, we have Artazar's pre-evolution, which is a little cutie with some, some flippers. And keep in mind, these fossil Pokemon are based on dinosaurs. So this little Artazar pre-evolution could be a humongous Pokemon. So yeah, all of these fossil Pokemon are Pokemon we've never seen before in the right assembly. And maybe if we ever get a sequel to Pokemon Sword and Shield, we'll actually have the fossil Pokemon in their right forms and not all mismatched. And yo, big shout out to Fatmon because he killed it with these fossil Pokemon. I absolutely love these. Now, for this next one, if you watched my last video, 10 Pokemon that actually died, you know that the legendary beasts were trapped in the fire in the brass tower and then were eventually revived by Ho Oh. And what's really cool about the legendary beasts is that they weren't legendary Pokemon before they were revived. They were just regular Pokemon like Pidgey or, or Houndour. And I know, I talked about how the Eevee evolutions could be the Pokemon that were revived and became legendary Pokemon because Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon have a lot of similarities to Entei, Raikou, and Suicune. And that I said that I think this is what happened, that the Eve Evolutions became legendary beasts. Let's just play the devil's advocate and say they were Pokemon that we've never seen before. So with that said, here is the concept art that Dark and Winnie drew for the legendary beast Pokemon, the, the non-legendary beast. And yeah, as you would expect, it, there's really nothing exciting going on with the design. It's just a solid, normal looking Pokemon. And this design was inspired by the silhouettes we see in the Pokemon Generations episode where the brass tower burns down. And in the artist notes, Dark and Winnie mentioned that he created the mask of this beast so that it has room to turn into the crowns that you see on the legendary Pokemon. Because if you notice, they each have their own little cool crown design, especially with Suicune with the crystal looking thing. And like you probably guessed, we based this design off the silhouettes from the Pokemon Generations episode where you see the beast burning in the brass tower. And all of the silhouettes look the same, so they might have been all the same kind of Pokemon, so that's why we just did one design for the beast. So yeah, just a fairly simple design, but I still think it has a really awesome history to it, so that is why I put it on this list as well. <laughs> Next, we have Fortress, and yeah, surprisingly enough, Fortress's identity has never been seen before. Because in his Pokemon Gold Pokedex entry, it states that what lurks inside in the armor is a total mystery. And then it just repeats that over and over again all throughout the generations. And what's interesting about Fortress is that it shares the same category as Burmy and Warbidam. They are the bag worm Pokemon. And as we see with Burmy, it's, it's a Pokemon that we've seen without its disguise. And it's basically just a bug that puts, you know, leaves on it or sand or something. So with Fortress, inside this Fortress-like shell, there is a bug Pokemon that's lurking inside. So no, that black design you see on the shell isn't actually a pattern. It's just the darkness from the shell that you see from the outside. And its eyes are actually the bug inside the shell peeking from the shadows. Kind of like what you would see in Tom and Jerry when it's like pitch black. 
So for the art, Fatmon created this little cute little bug that has like a tipper to it. As you can see, it, it looks angry and it's like blowing out steam from its horn like things. So the bug inside the shell having a temper would make a lot of sense on why Fortress chooses to explode all the time. And also the steam could be like a propellant for when it spins around doing like rapid spin or something. It would make a lot of sense if the bug was emitting steam somehow. And as for the stubby legs, I feel like we just pushed against the walls inside the shell so it could stay in one spot while like blowing steam into the horns of the shell. So yeah, I, I just love this design and I love the fact that Fortress could be a bug inside of a shell that's just very mad at everything. So whatever's looking inside of there, we will never see. And that is why I put it on this list. It's a Pokemon we've never seen before. And finally, we have Mimikyu, the Pokemon you all probably been waiting for. And okay, Mimikyu has been seen before, but that person died. So other than that one person, all of us have never seen Mimikyu. And since this Pokemon entry talks about how his true appearance caused someone to have a heart attack because of terror, it really makes you wonder what on earth is inside that disguise? What kind of monster lies hidden under this, this rag? And well, we think that it might not be a monster, it might just be with his eyes. There's something wrong with Mimikyu's eyes that causes people to pass away. And with that theory, this is the art that we came up with. It's just a blob with some spikes and some crazy looking eyes. Yeah, it doesn't look that terrifying. I just think Mimikyu is misunderstood and it might have some kind of curse with his eyes. And the curse being is if you make eye contact, then you'll just drop dead. Which probably makes Mimikyu believe that it's ugly. It kind of reminds me of Cyber from X-Men because his mutant power is that he shoots laser beams out of his eyes and to not destroy everything around him including his loved ones he has to keep his eyes closed. So the same concept could be with Mimikyu. Mimikyu could be the cutest looking thing in the world but his eyes are cursed. But yeah that's just one of many theories on what's going on under that rag with Mimikyu and for all we know it could be the ugliest thing we would ever see in our lives. So let me know in the comments what is going on with Mimikyu? Is it just a Pokemon with a curse or is it like an ugly scariest thing you will ever see in your life? Let me know down below. And there you go, 10 Pokemon that you've never seen before. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe and ring that bell to stay notified for future uploads. And if you want to binge my other videos, click on the end card right now and, and just start binging. Also, if you want to join the Dobbs H and Discord server, click the link down below and you can join us and, and talk to us. And also be sure to check out my gaming channel, Dobbs Gaming, below as well. And that's all for this video, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.